mid-range wedges, cornerstone drill, those kind of things. Um, Jim, do me a favor, work the, work the computer for me. You know, so these kind of mid-range wedges, like p my pitching wedge, so my sand wedge goes 110, I guess. But I, I don't look at it like some hard number. Or I look at it like I know I can maybe hit it 115 if I try to smoke it, and I rarely do. You know, I try to hit a driver hard from time to time. I try to hit certain things hard from time to time. I don't really try to hit my sandwich really hard. But I do have the ability to hit a variety of distances within my comfortable max. So say pitching wedge, for example, if I hit a full one, it's 135. One, that's about as far as I can hit a pitching wedge. I feel comfortable at that hitting it that far, okay? Some tour players hit it 160. We're crazy fast whippersnappers these days, okay? But these motions that we're going to talk about, you guys are going to go practice out there. Um, go ahead and capture this one for me, Pro. Go uh, arm that thing. You know, so here's kind of a mid-range wedge. And, you know, narrowish stance. You'll notice the club is, is it on the ground or off the ground? It's off the ground, guys. And I might tap. Okay, and I know you guys can watch it. If somebody wants to go sit over there, they're welcome to. That's fine. Might be a better view from by the sink area, okay? You know, but as I as I hit or hit this little shot, you know, and kind of hold my finish. So Jim just, yeah, while that thing's saving, go ahead. No, and, and there's there's nothing to get in the moment right now, so Debbie, so hang tight and I'll kind of explain it. So Jim can load those those two up face on and down the line. And I'll, I'll kind of talk through it. So, you know, there's kind of a narrow stance with a golf ball fractionally forward within my narrow stance, right? So in golf nerd speak, we call that position one, position one's address. So let's go to position two on both, Jim. Position two, you guys, is when the shaft's parallel to the ground for the first time, okay? We see, you know, a lot of interesting things when shaft's parallel to the ground for the first time. Typically in this position, um, go live on the left camera. So... There you go. I know which one that is. There you go. Typically in that position, so here's, you know, that's P1. What we're going to see in that, we're going to see the club zipped around inside quite a bit. Typically the lead arm has too much rotation, and that causes a problem. Okay, so we're looking for, can we develop a reliable mid-range wedge game so that I could say to you, hey, hit it take your sand wedge and hit it 60 yards and you feel relatively confident you can hit it nicely at the middle of the face and roughly 60 yards right 55 to 65 to all four of you can do that yeah I can do that okay if I ask a pro and I've done that before I've invited some of the pros at practice here to come over they can hit a five iron whatever distance I ask them to hit it within from you know 50 to 210 yards because they know how to move the golf club. They know how to kind of anticipate what it feels like. I want you guys to be able to do the same, okay? So that's called position two, that screen you see on the right. Here's the version of, you know, the face-on version of that, okay? Go ahead and put my golf swing face-on in there, coach. Okay, so let's move both up to what we call position three. You know what, go back to P1, coach, and put a, put a square on my left shoulder down to the bottom buttons on my shirt. Yeah, bottom, yeah, there we go. All right, and then, you know, so I did this with Debbie a second ago. So which way is my left shoulder going, guys? Is it going, would you call that down, or would that be, you know, which direction is that going? I'd say that's downish, down and under. Yeah, okay, so let's go to P3, coach, left arm parallel. So that left arm went pretty much down and under my chin to a degree, didn't it? So the down the line view, right? So that shoulder went and kind of touching the fuzzy on my end of my microphone right there. So that position is what we kind of call P3. And on this swing, that, that might have been the length of my backswing. It might go a little farther, but I don't know. But there's a situation where, and go um, on the left screen, make it the down the line view, coach. Okay, you can get rid of that square. So, you know, I set up, right, so when I stand, and then I tip over, this is me hinging at the hips, you guys, okay? So this event of me, my movement from here, hinged at the hips, if I turn parallel to the ground, look what that's going to do to my head and my body. 
Okay, so I'm hinged at the hips. If I turn parallel to the ground, my, sh my club's probably parallel. My head probably had to come up. My left shoulder turned parallel to the ground. So you have a little bit of that. You have a little bit of that. Okay? So we got to fix that with you guys. Make sense? We want to learn how to move in our address attitude. So when I tip over to the tip over to address the club, address the ball, right? I've got some forward bend, and I'm going to learn how to move my shoulders in that relationship. And now watch what's happening to my right knee and my right hip to help me do that. Safe to say that that flex of my right leg is coming out a little bit. It is, isn't it? Okay. We want to feel like our, you know, if we're going to turn our torso a lot, we need to have a little bit of pelvis assistance. We need to feel like we can push into the ground to help our pelvis get higher, to help our left shoulder turn in its forward bend incline here. So my left shoulder is sort of underneath my chin. It's sort of underneath my chin, guys, because I'm in a forward bend to a golf ball. Fair? I'm not trying to go rock it down completely to the left. Some people kind of exaggerate, oh, you want your left shoulder down, Martin, in the backswing? Yeah, but not like that, right? So there's combinations of, you know, how the body works, okay? I'm getting in a readiness position to hit a mid-range wedge shot. Lead shoulder works down. Why is there a lot of magic in that? Why does that help you hit it far? Okay, Gareth gets a lot of speed pound for pound. He smashed his butt there, okay? When a left shoulder works down under your chin, it also has... A, Whatever goes down has an opportunity to go up. Fair enough? If something just turns around, it can only unwind. It can't, we can't use anything to help it go up. So there's a lot of magic, you guys, in this. If I hold the golf club, go live on both screens for a sec. So as I you know, get this momentum going, kind of tick-tock in my fingers, all that is is rhythmically swinging. I can increase the speed of that by waiting for this moment of fall, and it's a state of fall I can pull up okay and in that pull up guess what I can do I can accelerate the golf club you go wait a second I, did, I thought we were supposed to stay down when we played golf I'll tell you yeah, maybe there's some things in your body that stay down or increase rather than staying down good players and we talked about this for a moment good players have a sense of getting light before they get heavy be like what the hell does that mean getting light before you get heavy if I'm gonna jump okay if I jump, before I jump, I'm going to lower myself quickly, right? So watch my feet for a second. So if I lower myself quickly, what, ha what happens to my feet? What did they do? They came off the ground a fraction, didn't they? Now I assisted that a little bit, okay? But if I lower quickly, you know, there would always be a sound right there. Because it's hard to lower without that response of, you know, unweighting so much that you hear something. So I'm going that way, but the earth doesn't. The earth thinks I disappeared for a millisecond. Do you understand that? You get it. You get it. You get it. Okay. Good. Jim's like, yeah, I get it. Of course you get it. You did 450 yards, knucklehead. Okay. I'm glad you get it, Jim. <laughs> Jim gets it. Everybody gets it. All right. So the point, you know, this event here's me unweighting, and here's me getting lighter. You know, if I take on more flex here, it's you know that's one side taking on more flex. I can do it with both feet as I'm going to jump up in a test and see how high I can knock those things in those combines those athletes have to do, right? Okay, so you can have that sense of what is it like to let yourself get lighter? And now guess what? I'm getting lighter and I catch myself. All of a sudden, boom, I'm heavier. So that that's the dynamics of how somebody can really start to create some speed. And what we want to do is make you a very efficient pivoters. Okay, create a really efficient pivot to where you guys get set up. You're a little narrow and boxy, you know, so we're going to flare you out just a couple degrees each with the toes. Okay, you being squared up works pretty well for you. I don't think we really have to mess with your feet. Okay, you look pretty good. You look pretty good. Um, a little wider for you. Okay, but in the mid-range wedges, you don't need to be very wide because we're only hitting these uh, the selected amount, the selected distance, and we're going to go out there and say, okay, everybody, 60 yards. So if you say, I know you don't know what to do yet, right? Okay, no, that's fine. And so you're going to start to catalog awareness and feeling. And so pretty soon you go, oh, yeah, I got 60. Let me tuck that in there, right in that file folder. Oh, oh I need 60. Oh, 
there's 60. 60 feels like this. And I guarantee you, if a ball got in the way of that, okay, did I say Siri? <laughs> Shut up, Siri, I said 60. Okay? But if, if you said to me, Martin, give me 60 yards, I'd be like, okay, I know what 60, I know what 60 feels like. Yeah, I've hit enough shots at a pylon out there, 60 yards. You know, I've hit enough shots within my 60 to 1 whatever that I know what the sense is. I can go to the file folder and go, oh, 60, here it is. Feels like this. And I also anticipate, I kind of begin with the end in mind, so to speak. I know what 60 finish feels like and I know what it looks like, right? 60 isn't just some nebulous thing where I go, a ball, oh, how'd I do? I know what it feels like on this side. So I go to that location with the speed in mind. Right? And there's a lot of beauty to knowing where you're going. Okay, when you're driving a car and when you're hitting a golf ball. Okay, so a lot of these, we're going to a similar spot. We're just going there at a different rate. Right? So when we kind of, I'm going to have you guys in here for a bit more thorough swing look here, a little deeper dive in your technique. Okay. But as you do that, you know, Jim's going to have you kind of do sets of five outside with different distances in mind. And we'll turn on TrackMan, okay? And we'll probably have to put the, the iPad in the shade because it'll, it'll get too hot and turn off. But I want to see if you guys can start to relate your body motion to yardage. Not just lucky, but kind of calling it. Saying, you know, this one's going to go 50. This is what 50 feels like. How'd you do? Oh, 52. Cool. This one's going to go 65. How'd you do? 64. Ooh. Because that's how a good player would be. Question, comment, concern? Good. All right. So let's go back to some of those technique things. I'll try to keep these videos certainly under 20 minutes because I don't want you to get too bored. Yeah, I'll put the swings back up. We'll just kind of go through the positional stuff. So P3 on both sides, guys. My center, the, in other words, the the... Nike logo hasn't gone to the right very much, hasn't gone to the left. See what I mean? My head stayed fairly still. I'm not trying to keep my head still. I'm moving my body appropriately. Guess what happens? If I move my body appropriately, my head stays still. Okay, your Nike logo will stay very still. Okay? So that's P3. Now let's go maybe, maybe it creeps up to P a little bit more P3 in a bit. Or is that it? That's it. So, yeah, so a full swing. If you go click on um, this, the first or second uh videos right there, coach. Put that face on beside my pitch shot face on. Okay, and then go to go to P3. Good. So there's my P3 for a pitch shot, P3 for a, I don't know what, I hit an 8 iron. Okay. What do you notice? A little wider stance, but generally looks pretty similar, doesn't it? Other than the stance width. Now, I am I have intent to hit that shot a little farther, so go ahead and roll, see where this swing kind of stops. Okay, so that's P4. That's my P4. Top of, top, you know, that's when I'm changing direction right there. First moment when my swing stops, goes to zero, and I'm about to accelerate it up to 80-something to hit an 8-iron. Okay? Right? So you see the difference between P3 and P4. When you're hitting these wet shots, you'll probably go to P3 most of the time. It'll look kind of like this, guys. Left arm parallel, right arm parallel. And we can do that at different rates. Do it faster with the pivot, slower with the pivot, control our distance. Okay? Now let uh, the left screen come down to P5. So there's P5, and then go to P5 on the right screen, Coach. Good. So what do you notice the difference on a full 8-iron versus a you know, 60-yard pitch? Maybe that, maybe that club looks a little bit more loaded on the left. Why would that angle on my wrist be different, guys? What do you think, Christine? Take a shot. You can be wrong. Being wrong is fine. Yes, good answer. You know, I'll go to the judges. Judges give me a yes, and you pass. You're, you go to the next round, okay? Because why? There's a weight at the end of a stick. There's structure up here. When I move that, when I'm moving a little faster, the weight resists changing, doesn't it? Put some stress. Question, thought, or just a, ooh, just an ooh. Okay, right. So you see, it looks a little dynamically different, right? Let's go to P6. P6 is when the shaft is parallel. That's left arm parallel for the last time. Here's shaft parallel for the last time on both of these, okay? Right. So, you know, you see a little bit more dynamic look on the left and the right. Again, it speeds the 
speeds the issue, maybe a little wider stance. Okay, let's go to P7 impact on both of these. P7 on the pitch, P7 on the 8 iron. Okay, so you know, the shaft's leaning. Um, and you can take a look at my head, interesting. On the, on the pitch, on the right side, my head's releasing a little bit more. Certainly not trying to keep my head down, I can assure you. I'll never tell you to keep your head down on this golf school. I'll show you what helps you kind of keep your head organized, not moving around a bunch, how the body behaves, not your head. Your head doesn't do anything, but moves wherever your body goes, okay? And so now as we kind of take the, take the pitch shot through to P8, body is, you know, turning, arms are kind of with P8, perfect. Let's go 8 iron to P8. Head's releasing a little bit. One's kind of holding on for dear life on the left side because there's a lot of momentum trying to pull me down the bowling alley. If I glued my fingers in the bowling ball and just went, whoa, right, it would pull me down the bowling alley. Now on the left screen, you see a guy that's kind of, hey, go ahead and go live on, on the right screen, coach, on the right screen. That's okay. Pop that one up there. There, yeah, so that screen right there, guys, I am fighting all that momentum pulling me out right there, right? I've got to offset all that momentum just for a second before I can relax, right? Because this thing, momentum, inertia, it builds up. Have you seen the Olympics where the people grab the hammer thing? I want to do that once in the circle, and they pull the chain, it's got a weight on the end. I wish you do that for fun here. We should go order, get get an Amazon order a hammer, and then we can go <laughs> throw that thing right. So that person that's doing that, as that athlete starts to circle, don't they have to lean back farther and farther and farther because that thing's building momentum? Well, in a good golf swing, guess what? We're doing the same thing. Why would it be imperative that my pelvis push forward? Because this foundation underneath me that makes sense for a two-pound club at address doesn't make sense for a club that's 80 pounds over here. Now that makes sense for that 80 pound angle over here. You've seen the difference here. You get it? You get it? You get it. Okay, no, but, I, but at least if you understand the fact that golf club weighs two pounds, but when you swing it, its weight builds up just like the hammer toss, that centrifugal pull, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but the weight gets heavier and therefore we start to change our look to better manage the weight of that thing before it doesn't matter and we can kind of go into a finish just kind of stylishly because that's all it is right it is it's just finishing in style slowing down in style that's what it finishes you don't have to bash the club off your back balls have had its message how do you break nicely how do you put on the brakes you know like uh, you know, Tommy Fleetwood always looks great. Roy McIlroy puts on the brakes really well. You know, a Greg Norman was one of these. Didn't really put the brakes on. You know, he's whacked himself in the back. It's okay. I like people who put the brakes on nicely, though. Okay. So you see how some of these nuances happen? So let's go back to two live video um, live screens. And the things that we're going to look for when you guys are, are go out there, we're going to get you a T-square you know, use the ball location stick. You know, that, that guy has a little hole here. Right? And then we've got tons of grass last golf school this season, so you take as many divots as you want. Right? Go crazy. Divots, divots everywhere. Okay? Um, but, you know, what we're looking for here, guys, is can we, can we create a radius? So here's comfortably long lead arm, a little bit softer trail arm. That would be for you because you have kind of a dominant right arm structured with the lead arm, softer with the trail arm. Okay, can we, as this club's working down, agreed that that's working downward? Okay, it could stay working downward, or we could learn how to take some of the down out. And that's what good golfers all know how to do. They know how to take the down away appropriately. It's almost as though the swing creates a flat spot. As this circle is working its way down, good players are doing, here's pressure to the lead side. Here's me pushing away from the ground, which helps this club. And so here it's landing, landing a little too. Oh, nose up, nose up, nose up. Guy's in a panic. As he's pushing, standing up, tucking his buns, 
that's what takes this club from being too much descent to shallowing out nicely on the grass, touching the ball, having kind of a flat spot before a body rotates and pushes up away from the ground. Okay, So these little wedges, when you're out there and Jim's challenging you at different distances, okay, everybody, let's see 40 yards. I'm going to go change clubs, Jim. No, 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 just the same club, pitching wedge, 40 yards, because we can all do it and you guys need to be able to do it. Okay, He'll mess with your grip a bit. Right, a certain you know, you're you guys are, look pretty good, but all of these, it's like okay, here comes the plane, here's the bit of the crash landing, right? So as I clip this thing, you know, and that was a little thick on the bottom, not gonna lie. So there wasn't enough appropriate up to make the bottom a little bit milder, not so you know, catchy into the ground. One of my meant. oh gosh, there's no picture of Mo Norman in here. I gotta get a picture of Mo. Mo Norman was a famous Canadian guy, amazing ball striker. He used to say bacon strips, not pork chops. Pork chops are steep, deep divots, you know, thick ones, okay? Great for a steak and a barbecue, but not for golf shots, okay? Bacon strips, where imagine if something's working down quite a bit and we are pushing and tucking our buns under us, we take all the down, make the bottom sort of parallel to the ground for a little bit. Parallel to the ground, not by separating elbows, but by pushing away from the ground appropriately to feel our buns get under us and tall and chest heart to the sky, chest up. Okay. Does this start to create questions for you guys? Anything you want to ask me right now? Oh, 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 Miss Takata, you're too young for that show. You know what I'm talking about. Jimmy. Here, jump in. Is you know we're talking about we're talking about this nice shallowing and being able to shallow strike and be able to use all the extension. But if we have um no, but this if we have let's say we have a club coming down very steep like this, right? We call this the umbrella, the lightning rod. It's going to be a lot. As golfers, you get good at responding to try to shallow out the best you can just to hit a functional shot, right? So being, if I'm in a spot that's like this, or let's say the face is open too, like we have to start to move differently to shallow out this plane. Does that make sense? Because if it's coming down like this, you know, I've got to respond with something more up and like that so this thing doesn't, doesn't ram into the ground because it's, it's coming in too steep. Does that make sense? Yeah, or if we come in and let's say the face is, is wide open like this, it wouldn't make sense to, to shallow and do that because you'd, you'd hit it way right. So that's why we see a lot of you know, pelvises that don't want to relocate because the, the face angle isn't right. Um, so if you guys look at the screen on the right, you see all my pelvis is right on top of this white stick. Okay, So being able to relocate the unweighting that Martin was talking about. So see how this finished. So, so, so look where my hips are relative to that white stick now. So see, I've, I've relocated. You're going to hear that a lot this week, but relocating is being able to shift the hips, you know, closer to the target. And normally whenever we say forward, we're talking that way. We're not talking forward on the toes. Okay, so if we say you got to get more forward or hips got to be more forward, we're talking about towards the target, okay? So we're going to change some grips where, it, where a shaft is coming from. You know, you kind of lose it at the top, and it starts wiggling around, and then it gets steep, and then you literally hit every shot off the toe. It's kind of funny because you got every mark from the Sharpie marks you put on your ball, every club has a mark on the toe. We want to be able to hit the – what's that? No. No, it's, it's not funny ha-ha. It's like, oh, that's funny. We, yeah, so, so you can see any, every time, if I have to go down like this every time to deliver it, you can see there's going to be, you know, the toe is probably hitting the ground more than the heel through the strike, probably every time. Um, so the, the distance, guys, is, is um, I think of it like Steph Curry, right? All he does is shoot basketballs. Like, he doesn't catch the ball in the corner with three seconds left and go, okay, I'm 28 point something. And I kind of, like, he just reacts and shoots it, right? So as good players with your wedges, like what Martin's talking about, if, if, if he knows where 60's at, right, 
if you know that, then you, you become more reactionary in terms of when you're inside that 100 yards or 50 yards to where you kind of look and you go, okay, yeah, I can feel that, what that would look like or, or feel like to send the ball a certain distance or, you know, whatever club you're hitting, you can make those, you'll, you'll make them faster like the basketball player that catches the ball and shoots it and he's just reacting, okay? Um, is there anything else you wanted to add? So, you know, we train a lot of these mid-range shots on the first day to, one, you know, look at the look at the grip attachment, right? And being able to, this, this cornerstone shot, guys, is a very simple movement, but every, you know, every position, kind of what Martin showed on the screen, it can be correlated and related back to a, to a full swing, okay? They look very similar. He's just energizing the club differently with the full shot. But if, when you guys looked at those swings, you saw lots of similarities between both of them. Okay, so yeah, again, so you see how I'm, I'm not taking that club all the way back. I'd say about P3. You can see me on waiting, getting, getting forward, right? You see how I'm going to move forward towards the target, right? And then being able to extend nicely because the club's coming from an okay spot. It's not coming from a steep or too shallow. And then being able to relocate, um, the hips towards the target. You see how my knees are touching, guys? See how there's no no gap in between my knees there for the most part. Um, you know, I like to say, give the, the the right knee gives the left knee a little peck on the cheek, right? It's turning, right? I'm not slamming it shut like this, but I'm but I'm turning and relocating. So you guys see on the left screen, that you can't see any gap in between the thighs here. So that tells me I'm fully. Uh, rotated and balanced and, and look at my feet where's the weight pressure in my feet here you guys see how my toe is kind of curled up so there's weight on the heel and a little bit of pressure on the toe here just for balance okay so most good players they're always going to have this sort of look like this they're always going to be like this you see a lot of players Jordan Spieth all those guys hit drivers this this heel is turning out like that, right? They're not, they're not turning on the toe, okay? So, but what we see a lot of, and this goes back to the delivery, if I have something coming in steep or open and I have to stand up, where's that gonna put the weight of my toes or my body? Kind of on the toes. Because if I stood up like this and put my weight on my heels, one, I'd probably miss the ball, but then I'd fall back this way, so I have to kind of stay on the toes, okay? so. Being able to get a delivery, um, something you can respond to better is, is basically what I'm trying to say is, um, instead of responding to a steep or an open or too shallow, we've seen everything, so yeah. Talking about the right footed impact. Okay, yeah, this is a good one. So. Um, Good question. So we're talking about the right foot um, through impact and the downswing, right? So, so most players, you know, if this thing was invisible and you set it behind a good player hitting balls and you didn't know that he set it down there, he wouldn't even notice anything falling down to the ground because what do you guys notice? Where, where did this foot turn and, and um, end up relative to this? Yeah, it's far away from it. We see a lot of this. Again, relocating. If I don't relocate my pelvis forward, and I just, we see a lot of turning out like that, right? A foot that's going to go like that, you know, uh, spot the butt or whatever it is for baseball, right? So, yeah. So, to answer your question, the right foot throughout the downswing. There's a banking motion here. You guys see how I can bank this foot, right? So that banking motion kind of lets me know that I'm doing what with my hips? Relocating, right? It's hard to do this banking if I don't really relocate. And we're not asking for a ton of amount, right? We see people that, that slide too much, okay? But 
for the most part, this right foot, as I unweight, it starts to bank, and then it starts to turn. Okay? It's kind of a blended motion, but if you guys, um, you know, sometimes we get people with, uh, they'll have the rubber, kind of like you, I've got the Athlon too, uh, the rubber bottom, it's, the grass is wet in the morning, and you can hear a little squeak in the grass every time because they're turning their foot this way. See how loud that is? Doing this compared to, yeah, see how quiet that is? Sometimes those squeaky spikeless shoes are actually a good little training aid, right? So being able to, to bank and turn to help me relocate compared to doing something like that. Or we see people that, I say, I, I call it having your feet in cement. Like they, they're, they don't have any sort of relocating at all, right? So then, you know, they just kind of, they literally just kind of slap at it. But unfortunately, that's how golfers, you know, a newbie going to the rain, maybe like, let's say you're just out there, you bought some clubs, and, you know, someone, you know, oh, just keep your head, right? You know, being able, oh, how, how far am I going to hit that? Yeah, and then up and they go, good job, let's go play. And then you get, if it's one of your first, What's the word? Uh, your first, um, yeah, it's like a, one of your first foundation is this damn keep your head down. Like, that's going to stay with. You don't have much in your library right now, right? Which is good. Like, we can we can give you good, some good foundational piece, right? But we try to get people maybe have been playing for 30 years, and, they've, and we can kind of make it work, and we're trying to get that change. But it's hard to change that if that's... You know, where, you know, we, we had a guy, first thing he said is, Jim, he's like, I keep my head down. Not even me, how you doing? It was like, I can't keep my head down. He was like super excited to be here. <laughs> Guess what he was doing with his head? His head couldn't have been, no, he was like the most head down guy I'd ever seen. It was, it's, I mean, like he was like this, right? But they always associate a bad shot with keeping the head down. Or I lifted the head up, right? Now, now someone can, you know, lift up like what I was talking about, like this. What do I have to do with the head? Like, I have to keep it down, right? If I went like that, I'd, I'd miss the golf ball, okay? So, are there any other students' concerns about any sort of, like, general shot that we're talking about here, the, the nuts and bolts? Oh, the, the early, yeah, what, you know, so, you know, that, that can be caused by a variety of things, like what else?